everyone, it's Lou Collins. Today I'd like to talk to you about a technique that I like to use very often when I want to stamp colour onto dark cardstock. Now I absolutely love to use black cardstock, navy cardstock, burgundy cardstock, but then I find stamping onto it can be particularly difficult if I don't have some really good pigment inks. Now I'm going to be working with dye inks, these are my distress inks, and if you're a little bit confused about what a dye ink is and maybe a pigment ink is and a hybrid as well, you can check out this video video just here because that's going to explain all the differences to you. So looking at the dye inks that I have chosen, when I put them onto the navy cardstock that I'm going to use, as you can see, really can't see the colour at all. It just soaks in and that is not going to stand out as a beautiful stamped image. So we're going to really enhance these by doing another step first. This is so quick and simple and I think it's definitely something that you should be incorporating into your crafting a lot more. The stamp that I'm going to be using today is the Magnolia Half Tone Stamp and Die Set. So this item has recently been restocked at Craft Stash, but unfortunately it is almost out of stock again. So I did get this video done really quickly for you. So the item is linked down below, both on the UK and the US site. But as I say, be quick because I'm pretty sure this is not going to be restocked again after this. So with my navy cardstock inside my stamping platform, I'm just going to place my stamp whereabouts I'd like it on my cardstock and pick that up. Now this is a really, really large stamp, so I'm just going to lift up the edges and make sure that has no air bubbles underneath. So now I'm going to take a piece of resistant material and this is just a piece of acetate and I've got some white paint. Now the brand is irrelevant, it's white acrylic paint, so it's thicker than watercolour, it's not going to soak into your paper, it's going to sit on top, leaving you a lovely opaque colour. So white or certainly as light as you can find, and a few drops on my mat. Now I'm going to take a small brayer, I prefer to work with a smaller brayer than a larger one, it's a little more precise, I get less on the rest of my stamping platform as well. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that paint and then away from that blob I'm going to smear that so that it's a really thin coating on my brayer. And bring this over to my stamp and start rolling it on. The reason I'm using a brayer is because it's a flat surface so I'm not going to get any excess paint down into the parts of the stamp where I don't want it. Now the beauty of acrylic paint is it is water based, it's very very easy for you to clean up afterwards but you want to work quite quickly because it does also dry fairly fast as well and that includes on your stamp. So ensure you're covering all the areas and going back and forth in all the different directions. Do not worry if you get bits on your stamping platform, you can wipe those off quickly before you stamp, it's not the end of the world. And then I'm going to press that into my blue cardstock and make sure that I'm getting a really good impression with this. Now a quick tip here for you is if you take too long pressing your paint into your cardstock, the stamp is actually going to stick to the cardstock and that could cause issues peeling it off. So make sure you're giving it lots of pressure all over but quite quickly. So lift that away and now we need to make sure that everything has stamped. Now this particular stamp does always look odd when it's just stamped in one colour because we have got the half tone effect here so there's some areas that are missing. I'm going to now first of all give this a quick wipe to take the excess off. Then I'm going to thoroughly soak the stamp in water and leave that to sit for a moment. This is going to water down any paint that's in the grooves and the bumps of the stamp itself. And while that's sitting in water, you can wash your brayer and your mat. Now I like to take something like a stamp cleaning pad or a blending brush cleaning pad and brush this all over the surface. This is going to ensure that your water is getting into all the parts of the stamp. And then take a piece of kitchen towel and lift up all that excess moisture. This is cleaning the paint out of the stamp while this is drying. So we're not wasting any time because we wouldn't be able to be getting on with this until this is fully dry anyway. Now you can of course use a heat gun to dry this off if you wish. Um, but while I'm cleaning it doesn't matter if I'm taking my time. So after just a few minutes in a warm room, the paint is dry, I can now add my colour over the top and it's going to be much more vivid than we saw when we first swatched those ink pads. 
So I'm going to reposition my stamp. It's very, very easy for you to see exactly where you're stamping because you've got that bright white coming through the stamp. So I like to line up the stems because they are a solid piece rather than the half tone dotted image. And the half tone gives you shading, contrast, highlights as well. So that's why they're really important for getting this fabulous watercolor look on your images. So now to apply my ink, I'm going to go with a Distress Ink Peacock Feathers and I'm going to press this mostly over the florals on this design first of all. Again wipe up any excess and then I'm going to take peeled paint which is a green and I'm going to take a stencil brush and I'm going to dab this green over where the stems are and where any of the leaves are. I've got a little bit of the peacock feathers also in these, but that doesn't worry me at all. Once you've covered that, you can first of all try stamping just as it is. And then if you find that colour isn't quite enough, watery enough or deep enough, you can then spritz a very light mist of water if you need and try again. But looking through this, I think this is going to be quite good. So we can see there how much bolder that colour really is. So that's just one layer of the colour and if we compare that to the inks that I swatched before you can see how much brighter that is. Now to simply add over the top the die cut from the set. I've chosen to do this in gold so that beautiful blue is shining through. And there you can really see how well those highlights and those shadows work on that stamp and how beautiful and bright the colour is coming through. And the beauty of this stamp is that you also have the option to test out the remaining ink on the stamp with a more watercolour look just by spritzing it with water and stamping it onto a new piece of cardstock. So I like to do this with this stamp every time I use it, just allowing that ink to soak into the paper underneath just to see what sort of image I'm going to get. So this one is very much a more watercolored image. And if I again use a beautiful outline to just pick up the detail, you'll see how stunning this really looks. Just look at that, isn't that gorgeous? So that's how I like to use my inks on my darker card stocks by applying a layer of white acrylic paint first of all. Now you can also do this with a white pigment ink but I definitely find that the acrylic paint works a little bit better, it's a little bit bolder and gives you a much nicer effect at the end. Hope you enjoyed this quick tip today, please do make sure you subscribe to my channel and I think you're also going to like this video coming up just here. Take care everybody and I'll see you again very soon.